I'm going to take you through a typical layout of a sequential four-cylinder gasoline CNG conversion kit just so you can get a rough idea of the components and their typical locations and how the hoses are routed. Up here you can see the stainless steel line coming in from the tanks in the back, uh, your high pressure gauge, the high pressure lock off to stop the flow of gas whenever the system is off, uh, the output to the injector rail for the lower pressure, the vacuum reference port uh, going to the manifold vacuum. Over here you can see the MAP sensor that goes to the manifold vacuum as well and also connected to the fuel rail here uh, to indicate the pressure of the gas on the fuel rail to the computer. Uh, the low pressure hose comes around to a low pressure filter here uh, just to trap any debris and mostly for trapping oil so it doesn't get inside the injection rail. Uh, compressor oil does tend to work its way into the system from all the compressor stations so uh, we have that filter in there to kind of catch it and keep it out of the injector rail which can prematurely wear the injector o-rings and seals. It's also very important as you can see here the injection rail is uh, at about a 30 degree angle that there be some downslope uh, on the injection rail uh, so if any oil does get inside of there it doesn't pull and sit inside the injectors. Uh, at least mounted uh, horizontally best case would be at least a 45 degree angle so any oil that does get in there will will be shot into the engine and not sit inside the injectors and pull. Uh, you can see the output lines going down to the injector nozzles are a little difficult to see on this car they're right alongside drilled and tapped right alongside about a half inch apart from the gasoline injectors and you want to mount those as close as you can to the fuel injectors and as close as you can uh, to the to the actual end of the inlet manifold so there's less duration for the gas to to make it to the actual cylinders and that will make your the closer you can get that will make your switch over uh, smoother and the shorter these lines are going from your injection rail down to the manifold will also make your switch over smoother whenever the system first kicks in because uh, you won't misfire uh, from a from a cycle basically not having gas down into the cylinder because it has such a long gas path which will make your switch over a little rougher. Over here you can see the uh, CNG computer mounted alongside the battery. Not too happy about that location because a little bit of battery acid might get down there. I really don't want that but it's a fairly cool and dry place for it to go. Uh, the exhaust manifold is on the rear of this engine. This is a 2009 Accord with a 2.4 4 cylinder. Uh, so we put the regulator back there and kept the engine away from that, the uh, engine computer away from that heat up here in the front. Uh, the injector wires are tapped into in this harness here, and uh, the tachometer reference is underneath this cover here. There are the ignition coils, and uh, we tapped into one of the, uh, the negative pulse to one of those ignition coils uh, for a tachometer reference. Here you can see where the uh, manifold vacuum supply is coming from off of a port that already was uh, attached to a vacuum canister. We teed into it there. Uh, just make sure that you're, what you've teed into is a, is a direct manifold vacuum and not uh, going after a solenoid or something like that that might uh, change, the, change the readings. That's teed into. goes all the way around to the map sensor up on the firewall and uh, that's also teed over to the regulator that has a reference for the manifold vacuum that basically uh, as the vacuum decreases uh, that allows the, the fuel pressure to rise a little bit and keep up without uh, dipping off sharply when under heavy load and then the line also going from the map sensor for the pressure reference coming around here to the the actual injector rail and uh, this little wire coming off that same spot is uh, is for the uh, CNG rail temperature of the gas which is uh, used in a formula in the computer to calculate the density of the gas based on the temperature that's coming in. 
on the regulator up here you can see also the uh, the coolant lines a little difficult to see a little low light here there's a uh, one on each side uh, these are typically tapped into teed into your uh, heater core uh, coolant lines uh, in this situation and in uh, many situations you'll find that uh, cars will have a heated throttle body uh, where they circulate coolant for colder climates uh, to keep the the throttle body from freezing over and you can see here you have uh, two lines circulating coolant through this through this assembly just to keep it warm and uh, instead of teeing in and having to cut uh, into the heater core lines uh, you know creating a couple more leak points we uh, tap into this source and just basically uh, take off this is where it would have normally went down to the uh, to the throttle body we loop it through the regulator and then back out to the throttle body uh, and it's just a little tighter seal as long as there's enough coolant flow in that circuit to keep the, the reducer up to temperature then I think that's the way to go uh, just because you got less leak points on the those T's sometimes tend to dribble a little bit whenever you cut into those larger heater hoses if you don't have really good uh, crimp clamps on them also you can see up here on the reducer the temperature sensor right in this little cavity here that just indicates to the computer uh, the, the coolant temperature uh, it has to meet a predefined setting that you can set making sure that the uh, coolant temperatures got up to temp and the engine is not in, in a heavy enrichment mode from being cold before it kicks in and down here we have the power and ground connections directly to the battery and fuse holder right there uh, which will be a 10 amp for a 4 cylinder application a 20 amp for a 8 cylinder application where you have two injection rails our ignition source uh, also comes from the injection rail uh, where we tapped into this harness here for our injector signals uh, you can also take the power wire from the injectors and tap into that for your ignition source because that's always going to be a, a decent ignition source because obviously the injectors have to turn off with the key. We would recommend whenever you mount the ECU uh, that it be mounted fairly firmly and that the harness always be at the bottom. Uh, keep it mounted where the harness is directly at the bottom or at least a, to a 45 in case there was ever any humidity to get into the connector or anything uh, that it would drain back out if you ever went through some heavy water or anything like that uh, prevent it pooling up inside the connectors and uh, up next we'll take you through the beginning of the programming steps and uh, get a little bit more advanced as we go along